Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why's it gotta be so hot, yo? <laughs> it's like 5:30 already, 5:40, something like that, and it still feels like 109 degrees. But uh, I'm in the shade, as you can see. I got a little bit of a breeze, so I'll make it work. Um, earlier today, I was having a conversation with my friend Matt Martin, known to many of us as the Grass Factor, and we were talking about soil pH and that kind of stuff. The word of the day is acid, uh, acidifying. Acidifying what? Well, my soil. Um, that can be done with stuff like sulfur and food grade citric acid. It's something that could really help your soil out, man. It could add a lot of benefits to your turf. Or can it? And that's kind of where my head's at. I'm, you know, sometimes I'm out here and I'm thinking how to streamline my program, how to improve it. Should I be doing this? Should I not be doing that? So my head's in that space of, is this something worth doing? We'll get into that in just a little bit. I'll use my own application of this stuff to talk through some of these things that go through my head. Is this overkill? Is it necessary? Because us lawn people, we can kind of get a little silly about stuff. So I'll use today's application as a basis for a nice little friendly debate. Oh, before I forget, because I always forget. My name is Jay. I really appreciate you guys watching. Now, before we get going here, I think I should do something first. Let me give you a quick update on what the lawn is looking like now after last week's video where I beat up the lawn when I scarified it. This is what it's looking like now. So here are some shots of what it looked like after I was done scarifying the lawn. And if you missed that video, just click up here on the top of your screen to check that one out. Afterwards, I just ran the mower over the lawn. So basically mowed it just so I could cut off all the grass that the scarifier had stood up. But as you can see, it's looking pretty beat up, but at this point, it's on its way to recovery. Now, I had no other plans to do anything else except sit back and let the grass recover, but a neighbor mentioned he was going to order some sand, so I said, you know what, order me two yards so that I can do some spot leveling on my lawn. So once I was done shoveling sand in the spots where I needed it, I took out the push broom and started brushing it into the grass canopy. And then the final step is to just drag the lawn. And this right here is a drag like what they use on baseball fields to just smooth it out. A little bit of a leg workout, but gets the job done. I worked till about 1 a.m. So when I was done, I turned on the irrigation and this is what it looked like the next morning. This is what it looked like about four or five days afterwards. And this is what it looks like today. This is the back, what it looked like the next morning. This is what it looked like about four or five days later. And this is what it looks like this morning. So it's about 11, 12 days from the day that I scarified and then level to today, the day that I'm shooting this video. Okay. So today, again, it's all about applying elemental sulfur. That's in prill form. I'll need to use the spreader for that. And then the food grade citric acid. That I'll need to mix in water, put in my backpack sprayer, and spray that on the lawn. Okay, now, what's the whole point of this? Why am I doing this? Your soil has a pH value, okay? You might have high pH, you might have a low pH. In my case, in Texas, I have very high pH. So, I need to bring the pH down. Why do I need to bring it down? That's because grasses prefer a pH that's in the low sixes. So like 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4. The closer you are to that range, the more optimized your soil is for grass. Okay, now, if your soil is too high, meaning it's too alkaline, so we're talking like 7.1 and above, then your soil tends to bind up certain nutrients right? Certain elements in the soil, they're just bound up in there. Now, if your soil is too acidic, where let's say it's on the lower side of the acid scale, right? 5.5, 5.0, anything below the sixes, well then it tends to release too many of these other elements. Now, in my part of Texas, the native soil pH is 7.9, and that's pretty high, like that's pretty alkaline. Grasses are pretty tolerant, however, they struggle a little more. The farther we are from those low sixes, 
the more that the grass is struggling for no other reason other than your grass is either getting too much of something or not enough of something else depending where you are on the pH scale. Right. Now I've been working on my soil for a while. I've got my pH down to 7.6. Now it's a really slow process and you might be thinking 7.9 to 7.6 that's really nothing. Well it really is because when you're dealing with the pH scale everything is tenfold. It is quite a bit of a move from 7.9 to 7.6. Now I'm still way 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 far away from getting down to the low sixes and I'd be satisfied ultimately I'd be happy just to get down into the low sevens high sixes anything's better than where I'm at right now in order for me to continue dropping the pH of my soil I need to continue to acidify my soil right it wants to go alkaline I need to push it the other way so the way I acidify my soil is by using an acidifying agent like the sulfur and the uh, citric acid now, why sulfur? Well, sulfur because when it mixes with soil, you get a chemical reaction. And that chemical reaction is what breaks down the calcium carbonate that is causing the pH of my soil to be so high. So I need to continue to apply this sulfur and I need to do those applications spread out over time. This isn't something that happens overnight. Now, if you look up the suggested application rates, it's something like five pounds per thousand square feet in the spring, and then you repeat that same application in the fall. Now, I've been told by people that know a whole lot more about this stuff than I do, that because of my soil's buffering capacity, that I can be a lot more aggressive. So, I've been told that I can go with five pounds per thousand square feet every month. The only issue I have with using sulfur is that the prills are yellow, right? And yellow on green grass, man, these, these things just stick out. It's a bunch of little yellow specks throughout the whole lawn whenever I apply this. So what I do, instead I'm gonna do it at two and a half pounds every two weeks. So in a month, I'm still getting five pounds per thousand square feet. So I have 1,600 square feet in the front. 1.6, converts to 1.6 times 2.5 pounds of this product. I need to apply four pounds to my front yard. Make sure this is closed, right? Always make sure it's closed. All right, let's go apply that to the front yard. As usual, the story of my life, I'm burning daylight, right? In the backyard, I have 3,250 square feet of turf. When I multiply that times the application rate of two and a half pounds per thousand, I get 8.125 pounds. There is six, so two and a quarter pounds more. Oh, yeah, it's closed. Woo! Wanna make sure that's always closed, man. At least I'm on pavers where if it had spilled, it's easy to get. You never want to do this stuff on grass for that very reason. There we go. All right. Let's do the backyard. Now, the other acidifying agent I'm using is the citric acid, right? This one I have to spray, so I have to mix it in water, throw it in the backpack sprayer, spray it on the lawn. This one, it's been suggested to me, again by people that know a whole lot more than I do, that the application rate for this is a pound per thousand square feet every two weeks. For me, just to make the bag last a little bit longer, because it kind of flies, even though it's inexpensive, it kind of, you can go through it pretty quick. So just to make the bag last a little longer and stretch it out, I use three quarters of a pound per thousand square feet. Now, when I multiply that three quarters of a pound times the size of my front yard, I know that I get 1.2 pounds, right? Because I do this so much. All right, it goes in water. All right, let's 
go spray the front yard. Ah, uh, breeze, man. All right, so what's the next day? Yesterday, I went ahead and finished applying my granular applications of sulfur to the front and the back. I went ahead and did my spray applications of citric acid, both front and back. So now that it's done, right, the sulfur and the citric acid, the acidifying process of my soil, you know, you gotta ask yourself, like I ask myself, is this something worth doing? Or take out the sulfur and the citric acid and insert whatever. Is it worth doing? Is it practical for a homeowner? Or is stuff like this overkill? Hey man, you know, take a moment. Think about that. Are you the kind of person that is, you know, that feels the need to apply something to your lawn every week? You know, just because you think it's gonna make it greener? You know, or are you more like me where, man, I run a, I run a very bare bones program, right? You kind of have to, ask yourself where do I stand in that what's reasonable well let's talk about that for just a second right let's take what I did here the the process where I'm trying to adjust my soil when it comes to this there's two schools of thought one there's people that believe oh it's essential you have to adjust your pH why well because when a pH is optimized your grass responds better it utilizes anything you apply to can't argue that logic I mean it's it's true but then there are others that feel that it's not necessary at all don't mess with pH for example I reached out to a uh, big-time legit researcher named dr. Travis Shaddix uh, he is the soil fertility and turf grass nutrition professor at the University of Kentucky and I asked him hey you know for a home lawn is it worth trying to adjust the pH? And his response to me was, if the appearance of the home lawn is already acceptable or, or satisfactory to the homeowner, then no, don't bother with it. That's a good point, man. You can't argue with that logic, right? If it's already looking good, then why mess with it? Could it look better? Sure, how much better? I don't know. It already looks good, I'm already happy with my lawn. So now, I have to ask myself a question, right? Based on those two arguments, very valid arguments, where do I stand? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little conflicted. My practical side says, just leave it alone, man. It already looks good enough, okay? And you know what, and that's even what Matt Martin told me. Just leave it alone, right? But what's kind of making me feel okay with trying and what's kind of pushing me over the edge is one word, man, curiosity. I am curious what my turf will look like, how will it respond, how will it perform in a more optimized pH level. That's really it. And this stuff, is, it's easy to get, it's easy to apply, it's affordable. I'm okay with trying it for now, right? continuing to try for now. Now, whether this is something you want to incorporate into your lawn program or not, I hope that it has at least sparked curiosity for you to go out and learn more about your soil right I mean it's pretty fascinating stuff man I hope you've gotten something out of this video it's another snapshot of things that go on on my lawn which is the whole purpose of this channel but anywho be good to yourself man really try your hardest to be good to the people around you it's a pretty negative ugly online world we're living in these days <laughs> um, you know and as a matter of fact don't try to be good be good do or do not <laughs> my name is Yoda I'll catch you later <laughs>